Hello everybody and uh, welcome to you today from wherever it is you're joining us in the world. My name is Gabriella Bussandri of Image Reality. We develop immersive collaborative software for the oil and gas uh, and other industry. We're joined today by Peter Guttridge, who is a carbonate sedimentologist and director of Cambridge Carbonates. Peter, welcome. Uh, Peter will be uh, using our Strapbox desktop solution to give us an overview of the Cretaceous sequence stratigraphy and paleography paleogeography, excuse me, of the Arabian plate. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Peter. We will have um, time at the end for question uh, and answer session. So please do feel free to post your questions uh, in LinkedIn or um, indeed in YouTube, and we will get to those at the end. So enjoy the session today, and I'll see you in a little while. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. And good morning, everybody from the UK. And Thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar on Cretaceous Sequence Stratigraphy and Paleogeography of the Arabian Plate. And I would like to wish you all a very happy new year. The aim of this webinar is to uh, look at the Cretaceous petroleum systems of the Arabian Plate using region, our regional paleogeographic maps, um, one of which is shown on the right here. And these are based on third order sequences split into sedimentary systems tracks within those sequences. We have paleogeographic maps at systems tracks level for the whole of the Paleozoic. Now I'm going to be showing you some much higher resolution examples of um, these maps later on in the webinar. But what I mainly want to illustrate here is the paleogeographic coverage of the area. Um, we have all the um, economically important part of the Arabian plate system stretching from northern Iraq through to Oman and up to the Zagros suture and over into the Arabian uh, shield. I'll also be explaining the symbols of the um, maps later on. Now in this, this webinar I want to present four case histories in carbonate and mixed carbonate plastic settings and I'll be presenting a uh, workshop with Image Reality, um, five days from five half days from the 29th of January to the 2nd of February, where I'll be discussing in more detail these uh, and other case histories and also the types of methodologies um, used to understand the Cretaceous petroleum systems. Now, let me explain how we constructed these paleogeographic maps. Um, in the 1990s, um, Cambridge Carbonates undertook some sequence stratigraphic and paleogeographic mapping in northern Iraq. And this is really the birth of these paleogeographic maps. And in 1990 to 2000, we extended the stratigraphic scheme and mapping to all Iraq. And this was the birth of one of the major um, benchmark publications about the Arabian plate, the Arabian plate sequence stratigraphy of which we're a co-author on that. And from 2001 to the present, we have since been updating the paleogeographic maps and extending them to the Gulf states and to the, across to the Zagros suture. And in 2010, we were also co-author on another benchmark publication in the area on the petroleum geology of Iraq. Um, these paleogeographic maps are based on a robust sequence stratigraphic framework based on the correlation of these plate wide third order maximum flooding surfaces, which for the Cretaceous we have labeled K10 to K190. Um, they are refined by published lithostratigraphy and chronostratigraphic data incorporating biostratigraphy and strontium isotope stratigraphy. And we recognize 30 third order sequences within the Cretaceous, which is far more than we originally uh, published in the Arabian plate sequence stratigraphy. And for each of these, um, we have defined low order, transgressive systems tract, maximum flood and high stand systems tracts are defined. And each map is identified by the maximum flooding surface of the sequence it contained. And we also incorporate published sedimentological information based on outcrop, published core, wells, logs, seismic geometries, and these are posted on base maps. And for confidential studies, we also incorporate uh, client data. 
Now, a brief overview of the uh, plate tectonic setting of the Arabian plate during the uh, Cretaceous. Um, it's broadly split into two phases. Firstly, from late Jurassic to late Cretaceous, where we have um, the Neotethys ocean um, widening. And so essentially this, the Arabian plate is part of the uh, passive margin sequence, um, passing from a continental area with emergence in the Arabian shield, which provided a source of plastics throughout the uh, Cretaceous, passing north eastwards into a um, continental passive continental margin setting. During the late Cretaceous to early Cenozoic, Neotethys began to close and we begin to see evidence of ophiolite abduction along the o Zagros Suture and also along the Oman margin. And at this time we see uh, structuring within the um, plate with the development of various uh, troughs and also reactivation of basement highs. And also at this time, we begin to see evidence of plastics coming into the basin from the collisional margin. Now, the overall controls on Cretaceous deposition. The Cretaceous is thickest up to about 10 kilometers towards the Zagros suture area and is also thick along the Rubalkali Oman mountain axis towards the southern part of the Gulf and it thins to zero by mainly by onlap towards the Arabian Shield. And there are major highs in the Fars province of Iran and along the Heil Rutba arch where the Cretaceous is much thinner. This controls the stratigraphical architecture of the Cretaceous and the Cretaceous comprises two mega sequences which are labeled AP8 and AP9. And these are split into six super sequences label one two three four five and six that are separated by five major unconformities and these sequences onlap the arabian shield to the west and generally thicken to the east and from the baremian to the aptian uh, this is essentially a passive margin um, and the aptian albion sequence boundary Change, uh, is associated with a change from north to south drift controlled by uh, opening of the mid-Atlantic and other sequence, sequence boundaries are controlled by uh, episodes of thermal doming in the Arabian plate. So this is the large scale sequence stratigraphic architecture of the Cretaceous. We also see plastics coming in from the Arabian shield in the early and middle Cretaceous. Um, carbonates dominating in the uh, middle to late Cretaceous and also in the western part, sorry, the eastern part of the plate. And in the upper Cretaceous, we begin to see evidence of plastic systems coming in from the collisional margin from the east. The framework for Cretaceous deposition is really controlled by the underlying um, geometries of the uh, Jurassic basins. And this is an isopack of the Thamama group, which is the first major uh, Cretaceous uh, sedimentary sequence. Uh, this includes API 8, uh, 8, sequence 1 and 2. And we see it's thickest in older Jurassic basin centres, such as in uh, northeast Iraq, Luristan, and Ab Oman Abu Dhabi area and you can also see the influence of north-south structures for example uh, with Gawar, Bergan and the Qatar Arch and these clearly influenced um, sedimentation throughout the Cretaceous. So this is the overall um, sequence geometry this is from Charland et al we have refined this um, since it was published in 2001 but we see a series of um, carbonate and mixed clastic carbonate sequences essentially onlapping the uh, Arabian plate to the west and thickening to the um, northwest. And I want to pick on four case histories within this to uh, discuss in a bit more detail. I want to look first of all at the early Cretaceous carbonate systems um, associated with the Minigish formation. So I'll quit out of 
um, PowerPoint and go to Stratbox. These are four paleogeographical maps for the uh, Beriasian, the latest Beriasian, which is the sedimentary sequence that contains the K20 maximum flooding surface. And this is the earliest Beriasian low stand, this K20 maximum flooding surface. And I can explain the um, the symbols and colours on the maps. If we zoom in, all the green objects are oil fields, the red objects are gas fields, and we have marked all the data points, wells and fields on the maps. Also, you may see these uh, red abbreviations, N67, one there, SE78. These are all abbreviations of uh, ref published references so that um, you can reference the source of this data from publications. Now, if we move out a bit, the colours, carbonates are represented by green, blue and grey. So these are all carbonate systems. Grey is deep water. Dark blue is outer shelf or deep ramp carbonates. Light blue is mid ramp and the palest blue is shallow water carbonates. So broadly speaking, all the shallow water facies in which you would expect your reservoirs are in the light blue ornamentation. Green means um, peritidal facies, carbonate peritidal facies. And as we'll see later on, plastics are represented by yellows and oranges. So I want to concentrate on the carbonate systems in the um, Minigish and Yamama uh, formations in during the earliest Cretaceous. During the low stand, we have carbonates um, de deposited in intra-shelf basins, fringed by a very thin uh, zone of shallow water facies surrounded by emergent carbonate platforms. During the Transgression, we then get carbonates developed over the highs and we begin to get um, broadening of carbonate facies belts around the margins of the basin with the development of uh, shallow water facies. And here we have um, shallow water carbonate facies uh, deposited in the um, southern part of Kuwait. Uh, fringing the um, basin margin here. During the maximum flooding surface, that's the largest extent of the um, sea level during the K20 transgression. And we have the shallow water carbonate systems being pushed back towards the um, Arabian uh, shield and expansion of the intra-shelf basin, uh, basinal area. During the high stand, carbonate systems can now catch up with sea level variation and we begin to get progradation of the carbonate systems um, out into the basin and a much broadening of um, shallow water carbonate systems. So we have this band of good reservoir quality in the Minigish uh, throughout Kuwait and extending into southern Iraq. So if we look at the actual architecture and details of the um, Minigish carbonate systems, this is a couple of cross sections, one from northern Iraq, one from southern Iraq, from the uh, Petroleum Geology of Iraq book. And this shows that the Minigish carbonate systems are a series of stacked progradational ramps. And for each of these um, flooding these third order flooding surfaces, the carbonate system steps out a bit further into the basin. So looking at the dist, we can use these paleogeographic maps to constrain the distribution 
of these this potential reservoir facies. Um, we've uh, these maps show the um, K20 sedimentary sequence here, and if we use the map for the K10 and the K30, we can map these distribution of these um, oolitic carbonate systems um, over the area to constrain the distribution of reservoir quality better. Now, looking in a bit more detail, this is a typical sedimentary sequence through the uh, Minigish where we get stacked uh, progradational packages. These represent these different uh, deposition during these uh, progradational deposition during this um, progressive flooding events. And zooming in in even more detail, we see these uh, typical reservoir facies are these stacked cross bedded oolitic facies with hard grounds and um, occasional burrowed intervals and much coarser uh, intervals with tidal channels cutting through the uh, oolitic sand body. And this is a typical uh, Minigish reservoir, very nicely sorted oolitic grainstone, um, good intergranular porosity supported by um, this patchy cement um, around the echinoderms. Okay, let me go back to the um, PowerPoint. Following on from the Minigish carbonate systems, we have a major unconformity, which is the uh, one of these uh, super sequence boundaries, which actually um, cuts down into the uh, Minigish carbonates and locally truncates and removes the reservoir facies here. And again, this can be mapped um, so we can understand the distribution of the reservoir quality. And then we get this progradation of plastic systems, the Zubaya, Ritawi and the Zubaya formation um, prograding in from the Arabian plate. And then later in, uh, we see carbonates expanding uh, back over the Arabian plate. And I want to focus in on the next case history, which is the Schweiber Bab Basin at the um, southern end of the uh, Arabian Gulf. And I want to look at this area down here. This is our early Aptian high stand systems tract. So this is the K70 uh, sequence with the K70 maximum flooding surface. And I want to look at the Bab basin down here. And we see an evolution within the um, Bab Basin. We have the so-called Lower Schweiber, which is the last of the Thamama ramps. And then we see an evolution into, um, during the later Aptian, uh, from a more ramp-like margin into these rimmed shelves. And we see this very typical uh, facies development um, Rudis grainstone making the main uh, reservoir quality at the uh, shelf margin, uh, passing down dip into more lower energy wax stones, carbonate mudstones, and ultimately into the uh, argillaceous mudstone of the Bab Basin, which being very restricted environment creates a very good uh, local, um, local source rock. So again, we can zoom in and look at the details of what's going on by looking at some um, paleogeographic maps. And uh... now for the next three slides, I want you to pay attention to this area here, because this these maps show the late Aptian transgressive, uh, late Aptian sedimentary sequence with the K85 maximum flooding surface. And you can see how the morphology of the Bab Basin changes uh, through this sedimentary sequence. So this is the transgressive systems tract and um, the map to the right is approximately, shows this area here to the south and this um, illustrates some time slice mapping by Pearson uh, 2010, showing in a bit more detail the morphology of the margins of the Bab Basin uh, by uh, seismic um, analysis. Um, 
this also shows the sedimentary model for the transgressive um, part of the shelf margin around the Bab Basin. We have a more ramp type margin with the carbonate system comprising intertidal to shallow lagoonal muds over the surrounding basin, in this case towards the uh, El Hook of High, passing out into a lower energy, more ramp-like carbonate system with um, algal platforms with rudis patch reefs and then into the intra-shelf basin uh, with carbonate mudstones and um, preservation of uh, organic matter. So moving now to the next paleogeographic map, this is the maximum flooding surface and notice that the margins of the Bab Basin have backstepped slightly because the um, during the transgression to maximum flood sea level is is deepening and um, we see backstepping of the carbonate systems and then during the late Aptian high stand carbonate systems prograde into the basin closing off the um, basin margin uh, cl closing off the uh, basin and the sedimentary system changes to a uh, more rim shelf type um, system where we have um, again we have shallow water carbonate facies around the margins of the basin with um, algal rudistic um, biostrome deposits uh, in the coastal areas passing out into um, shallow marine uh, lagoonal mudstones with rudist mound complexes developed at the platform margin and then a more abrupt platform margin passing into the uh, Bab Basin. Now we can also look in much more detail about the specific evolution of the um, margins of the Bab Basin. Um, our paleogeographic maps show a picture of third order um, geometries during third controlled by third order sea level variations. We can get using seismic, we can look at a much, much more detail of uh, how the margins and the reservoir distribution um, um, is, is, uh, is, is disposed. Here we have some publication published data using time slice analysis through the uh, near Top Schweiber Reservoir passing out um, from the platform top into the uh, intra-shelf basin. This fairly featureless area is, represents the platform interior area with these um, features on the basin, on, on the top of the platform, probably represented by uh, small patch reefs and lagoonal facies. And then this linear features represent a slice through the clinoforms so these are the dot tops of the dipping margins of the basin and looking at the amplitude um, along the eastern margin of the Bab Basin um, we can see amplitude anomalies along these um, clinoforms so we're looking at a strike section through the clinoforms and these are picking up facies variations along the um, clinoforms and probably represent um, variations in uh, reservoir quality controlled by depositional facies such as uh, carbonate shoals. Also, um, we, we see um, evolution of um, sequence geometries, again, controlled by these um, mainly third order sea level variations. Um, for the early Aptian, sequences two to four, we see largely aggradation into the basin. So all the carbonate systems are climbing up slightly and prograding into the basin. Um, during the Aptian sequence five, we have a low stand. So the platform top is exposed, but the carbonate system shifts out into the basin where production's optimal and um, it looks to the shallow water area, even though it's slightly deeper in the waters, uh, deeper in the basin. So we get these low stand shallow water carbonate systems developed over the lower slopes of the basin margin, and these prograde out into the um, Bab Basin. 
OK, I want to now move up sequence again to the Albion, and I want to look at a an example from a mixed plastic carbonate uh, sequence, um, the Maudud formation of the uh, Bergan Reservoir in uh, Kuwait. So if I now quit over to uh, Stratbox again, here we are. These are our set of paleogeographic maps uh, from the um, early to late Asbian um, set, a third order sequence that contains the 100 and K110 maximum flooding surface. And this, these are relevant to the um, Maudud formation in, in Kuwait. Um, let me just zoom in. So this map on the left is the earlier, is the low stand to the K110 uh, maximum flooding surface. And it shows a series of marginal clastic systems, um, light yellow represents um, deep water marine clastics, bright yellow represents um, shallow water clastics, and orange represents continental or deltaic or pro-deltaic. Pro Plastic. So we're at this zone of um, <clears throat> continental to, uh, marine plastic deposition with these plastic systems being input from the uh, Arabian uh, shield area to the uh, east, sorry, to the west. <clears throat> so we have a, a very thin veneer of, of plastics over in, in the Maudud uh, over um, the Bergan field in Kuwait. During the transgressive, during the transgressive systems tract, these carbonate, these continental or more marginal marine plastic systems represented by the origin orange in this map get pushed back over to the back towards the uh, Arabian plate, and we get a thin veneer of shallow marine to uh, offshore plastics. And then during the high stand we get carbonate deposited over the area. And in the case of the Bergan field, this, is, this produces a very thin reservoir, only a, a few tens of metres at most, whereas in North Kuwait, the Maudud th thin thickens dramatically uh, into uh, several hundred metres. So we've got a very thin, the Albion sequence uh, in southern Kuwait is represented by a very thinly interbedded carbonate and plastic system. So this is an example of a core log through the Maudud uh, plastics and carbonates of uh, Bergan. The lower plastic section repre represents the low stand and transgressive systems tract of the um, K110 sequence boundary. Uh, sequence and the upper carbonate unit represents the um, carbonate dominated uh, high stand and we see evidence for karstic erosion within the uh, carbonates these are penetrated by deep um, by cavities and uh, enlarged fractures that are infilled by um, the plastics deposited during the uh, next low stand to transgression. So this carbonate is infilled and the cast features are infilled by this glauconitic shallow marine sandstone. And this results in a very thin carbonate reservoir with some quite unusual uh, reservoir properties. We have got the original um, depositional pore system of the uh, uh, carbonates. Uh, mainly moldic and intergranular porosity, but superimposed on this, we have this much more extensive fracture system and system of enlarged cavities um, formed by uh, castification. Okay, let me now go back to the PowerPoint.
I now want to move up again to look at a case history around the uh, Mishrif formation. So we're back into the mainly uh, carbonate uh, depositional setting. Um, the Mishrif formation, this is our uh, middle Manian, middle Senamanian high stand map to the K132 uh, sedimentary sequence. And this best represents the um, extent of the Mishrif formation. Uh, we have a large area of carbonate deposition extending over central Iraq, uh, which is in the form of a, a broad ridge separating um, open marine areas fringing the continental margin, now underneath the Zagros suture, with the uh, intra-shelf basin, a much more restricted basin up against the Arabian Shield. And to the south of the Arabian plate, we still have the same Mishrif um, carbonate systems develop, but these are very severely eroded by the top uh, Mishrif unconformity. And I want to talk about that in a bit more detail uh, after talking about the uh, Mishrif itself. The main carbonate reservoir fusses are rudstone and greenstone sand bodies found along shelf margins. So again, we can map the distribution of those very in, in very great detail along the shelf margins. And these are dominated by um, rudest debris located along the um, shelf margins. These are, the shelf margins are locally controlled by structures and the reservoirs are commonly open primary porosity with um, not too much modification during diagenesis. So these tend to be very good reservoirs. So if we look, first of all, at uh, Mishrif systems in, in, in northern Iraq, we have this carbonate platform. We have this um, carbonate platform going through uh, Iraq. And this is the facies model for it. The main bank facies are, consist of um, shoals, uh, mainly made out of uh, rudest debris, well reworked, deposited in very shallow water, with minor build-ups along the flanks, with um, some local structural control uh, over north-south oriented and declines, for example, here, uh, which over which we have shallow water facies located. And this passes to the southwest into the Najav, intra-shelf basin, which is locally, uh, because it's restricted, it becomes locally evaporated and separated from the um, continental margin area by this emergent carbonate platform with the development of karstification. And then towards the northeast, we have this open, more open marine balambo garao basin, um, which doesn't get restricted during low stands. So we have this band of um, reservoir quality associated with this Mishrif Sanimanian carbonate platform. Okay, moving, moving to the southern part of the um, Gulf. Um, in terms of depositional setting around the uh, Shalif uh, intra-shelf basin, we see the very, very similar pattern of um, reservoir facies developed around the basin with the main, as in, as in Iraq, the main reservoir quality developed in rudest um, build-ups and <clears throat> rudest shoals around the basin margin, passing into the uh, intra-shelf basin. But we only have around the south west southeastern margin of the intra-shelf basin, we only have very limited preservation of these um, reservoir systems because we have a major phase of erosion that's cut down into the um, Senamanian. And I want to look at the top Mishrif unconformity now. 
as this has very important implications, not only for the distribution of uh, Mishrif re reservoir quality in the Mishrif, but it also has significant diagenetic effects. This is a diagram that shows the um, stratigraphic separation of at the top of the Mishrif unconformity. So we have this big hole in the Senamanian and Turonian within the uh, lower part of the uh, uh, Arabian plate, where we have these sedimentary sequences K140, K130, K120 progressively cut out by this fairly major unconformity. So this, we can see the effects of this on our paleogeographic maps. So this represents the paleogeography of the high stand to the K130 maximum flooding surface. And we're looking at this big hole produced by the um, top Mishrif unconformity, which cuts down into the uh, K130 um, sedimentary sequence here. This is the low stand to the K135. Um, so we've got a much more wider area of exposure superimposed on this this much lower order um, top mystery fun conformity and then we can really see how much section has been removed if we look at the uh, transgressive systems tract of the k135 where we we see preservation of the um, late to mid senamanian carbonate systems but eroded down into by this later unconformity again we're losing a lot of um, facies around the um, margins of the Shalif Basin around here. And then similarly, this is the high stand where we also see a fairly major um, hole and removal of the uh, Senamanian. Okay. Looking at the The effects of exposure and carstification uh, associated with the top mystery film conformity is variable. Sometimes you get this leaching, um, which improves reservoir quality. And this is probably mainly related to facies. So wherever you get good reservoir to start with, the effects of carstification probably improve reservoir quality. But in other areas, you get these very hard intervals where instead of leaching you get recrystallization of um, the original carbonate sedimentation uh, sediments to produce this very low porosity um, reservoir with reduction of um, porosity and permeability so the effects of diagenetic effects at the top mishri fun conformity are actually very variable and you've got to be very mindful of the um, whether you get enhancement or degradation of reservoir quality and you can this this can be assisted by understanding the distribution of the original uh, facies distrib uh, depositional facies uh, which can be mapped um, from the considerations of paleogeography okay i'll go back to uh, the powerpoint now So I just want to uh, wrap up by um, doing a quick summary of the late Cretaceous carbonate systems. Um, this is a, an isopack map of the uh, upper uh, Cretaceous. Um, deeper centres deeper are most evident along the uh, northeast margin where we're beginning to get loading due to um, uh, closure of the uh, near Tethys ocean and but we also see this north south fabric um, controlled by basement structures for example Bergan High, Gawar High, uh, Qatar Dome is still very prevalent so some north south um, underlying controls still control Cretaceous sedimentation. During the Turonian to early Campanian um, 
This is super sequence five. It commences with uh, regional unconformity that uh, top uh, mischief unconformity that I've, I've just discussed. Um, deposition of the Turonian uh, is actually very localized and tends to take place initially in intrashelf basins. And then you have reflooding of emergent areas, which can commences in the later Turonian in the northern part of the plate. And then we have an episode of major structuration during the Coniation with the development of uh, high relief along these north-south paleo highs that I mentioned. And these are often associated with the onset of rift development, possibly with a, a strike slip component due to intra-shelf stresses during the uh, uh, increase in compression. And elevated areas um, are unlapped by Santonian Campanian times. Um, and, and this is when you get these very large carbonate platforms developed. And some reservoir facies are developed with some source and seal uh, facies also associated, but these tend to be complex and often quite localized. And in late Campanian to Maastrichtian, deposition of super, super sequence six. Um, we have significant syn sedimentary tectonics along the Sagros margin and the Oman margin due to ophiolite abduction. We see the development of transtensional basins, sometimes over two kilometers deep. And we have widespread carbonate platform facies along the Arabian plate, uh, Arabian side of the plate, and locally very, very thick carbonate platforms on active uh, margins on the uh, northeast side, for example, here. And deep water marls tend to get um, concentrated within the basin centre and becoming very condensed towards the um, end of the Cretaceous. Then finally, we see during the later Maastrichtian, we begin to see these clastic systems coming in from the northeast side. Um, particularly in northern Iraq, um, sometimes locally very thick, up to two kilometres. And we see locally developed low stand platforms. Um, for example, um, if you drop sea level around these regional carbonate platforms, these become casted and you get, as before, you get um, localised shallow water carbonate systems developed in the shallower water that's now further out into the basin and these form local reservoirs also in the very deep water um pelagic miles such as the sharanish formation this is you get different types of carbonate reservoirs because um, you get the folding and structuration and fracturing uh, during the later compression so these deeper water miles and pelagic carbonates tend to produce these uh, fractured carbonates and also as the connection with the open marine um, area decreases during the uh, collision you tend to get evaporites appearing in low stand and transgressive systems within intra-shelf basin areas on the southwest and also the northeast margins okay well that is a very brief overview of um, the Cretaceous petroleum systems of the uh, Arabian Gulf based on our um, paleogeographic paleo mapping. And I want to expand on this in a workshop um, over half, five half days from the 29th of January to the uh, 2nd of February. And you can get further information from Cambridge Carbonates Limited and Image Reality websites where you can uh, uh, book a place on the workshop. So hopefully I'll see you again then. Thank you very much. Um, please let me know if there's any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you, Peter. That was great. Thanks so much for that. Yes, there is a question that has come through actually, uh, if you wouldn't mind going over that. And it's whether you would please explain how the paleogeographical maps are constructed. Okay, well, well taking the example of, of, of this 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 one, which is the late Aptian uh, high stand. Um, the first thing, um, the what we need first of all is a strong sequence stratigraphic framework. And as I mentioned, we 
did the work initially in northern Iraq and we established a um, secret stratigraphic framework that then got turned into the 2001 publication Arabian Plates Secret Stratigraphy. Uh, since then we've been revising it and extending it and we've actually expanded the number of um, third order sequences considerably so there's a lot more third order sequences that we understand to be present now compared with that um, uh, book and um, or, I'm talking about the Cretaceous now but we've also this mapping extends throughout the Phanerozoic from the um, Precambrian right through to the uh, the tertiary so we have similar uh, maps of this level of detail for the whole of the Phanerozoic. Now, it's based on published data and where possible, we use um, publications, um, published well data, seismic lines in, um, in the public domain to map uh, different uh, facies belts throughout the area. And um, we also, in, incorporate these maps for any confidential work we do. Um, we do not offer that that type of map for sale. So um, all the maps that are available in the public domain that we offer uh, are based on public domain data. Perfect, thank you, Peter. Uh, there's nothing else that I can see very much uh, at the moment, um, but um, perhaps uh, if there are any other questions that do come through, um, the people still watching are more than happy, uh, you know, would be more than able to continue to post those questions uh, in LinkedIn. And uh, perhaps Peter could, could come back to those and answer those uh, at a later time. I'm happy um, to answer, answer, answer questions whenever you like. Yes, perfect. All right, thank you. So thank you very much for attending this uh, this uh, webinar this morning. Um, just to give you a brief overview, perhaps, just in these last few minutes of the course, as um, Peter has mentioned, it is a five-half-day course um, that is available um, from the 29th of January to the 2nd of February, led by Peter, using our software Strapbox. Um, with access to the course, participants also obviously get access to the software. And prior to the course, um, they would be onboarded by us, Image Reality, and given an overview of the software so that you would be very much, so users would be very much aware of how to use it prior to the course. Um, and the course, it, during the course, the uh, software is used in, in the first instance by uh, Peter to give the overview using the maps and any other data he might have available, uh, but also to um, carry out exercises. And it's a collaborative um, software, which means that students can uh, go and carry out the exercise and then at the end of it, bring everybody's interpretations and insights together from the room and uh, Peter can go over an overview of um, of how you know what, what a good answer what uh, might be for the exercise in question that you're doing. Um, oh, actually, Peter, here there's another comment or question here. Um, uh, many authors speak about a late Aptian global low stand, even for Arabian plate. Van Buschem uh, at 2010. So how you speak on HSC, HST during late Aptian? Could you please explain this? Yes, um, we, the, 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 the paleogeographic mapping is really primarily based on, um, on what we see in, 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 in our own experience, in, 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 in on our work in the area and, our, and, and publications. Um, we can only really fit this together in a uh, regional context uh, when we have the overview and um, having worked on the entire Ar Ar Arabian plate stratigraphy we can we it's at that point you begin to see these connections to these um, global low stands global high stands and, and tectonic events so we we our mapping is really carried out um, on the basis of the local data as best we can and 
once we have the um once we have that picture and could match it to um, other stratigraphic and sedimentological events on the uh, Arabian plate, we can then begin to think about um, larger scale explanations. Um, I hope that, I hope that uh, helps your, uh, your point. Thank you, Peter. So uh, there's nothing else come through at this time. Um, so perhaps we will um, leave it there for today, for this particular webinar. Uh, once again, thank you, Peter, for, for that overview today. Um, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again at the next webinar. Thank you today to all of those that attended. As I say, if you do have any other questions or comments, feel free to reach out to ourselves or to Peter, um, and uh, we'll do our best to, to answer those questions. And if you also have any questions with regard to the uh, workshop uh, itself at the end of January, then um, do get in touch. And the information he has posted on this slide, either through Cambridge Carbonates or ourselves, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day.